Hello everyone. Today let's create a portal effect. We can modify these parameters, such as the background in the portal, which can be replaced with any texture. Also color and edge of the portal, as well as its duration. First, we need to use these assets, two textures and a static mesh. These textures are also provided to us by Epic. You can download them for free on my Patreon. One is a basic noise texture, and the other is a sphere mask texture. Each of its channels has a different sphere mask, which makes it convenient for us to create different shapes in the material. Then there is the static mesh, which is similar to a disc. It has two UVs. UV0 generated by projection, and UV1 that tiling UV layout. In UV1, the upper of the UV is the center of the disc, and the lower is the edge of the disc. Through UV1, we only need to use panner of the texture in the material to create a diffusion or contraction effect. And we also have a material function, which is the same as simple grass wind in Unreal Engine, but here we use a custom input to control its tiling, that is, how many distance units the mesh will be affected by the wind. Okay, let's open the portal material. First, its shape. Here we use this sphere texture. It has three different channels to store three different shapes, so we need to get them one by one. Yes, RGB channels. Then Texcord controls textures tiling, offset, and a distort effect. When we add the distort effect to this texture, the whole shape will be offset, so we add a small value to keep the shape in the center. Then there is the distort effect. One thing to note here is that we use index 1 in the distort Texcord which is UV1 in the mesh UV. In this way, texture will diffusion or contraction from the center. If change Texcord index to UV0, we can see that it will move in the direction of the projected UV, and the effect is very bad. OK here is still the tiling of Texcord, dynamic material parameters and time, which are all nodes we often use. In the portal effect, we only use one mesh, so there is no need to offset to create a random effect. Next is a shape OP, which is the shape of opacity. Then world position offset, where we get the shape B channel and use world position subtract object position, multiply them together, finally use dynamic material parameter to control it. When the value is zero, the lerp will output negative one. At this time, we have the negative vector of world position subtract object position. The sum of this and default world position offset is zero so world position offset will move to the point where the object position is. When the value is 1, the lerp outputs 0 and the mesh will return to the default shape. We often use this method to make absorption effects in materials. It is simple and effective. Next, MF wind, which is the material function we mentioned at the beginning. It is almost the same as simple grass wind, but here we add a new input to control the distance. The wind intensity is distort effect of the whole portal. The weight is set to 1 because we don't need the vertex color to control its weight. Let it be affected by the wind as a whole. The speed can be set to 0.25 or 1, higher speed will result in faster distort. And tiling, we set this value to 5000. If the value is smaller, the distort effect will look more. Finally, set additional world position offset to 1. That is world position offset part. Then let's see the mask part. The area controlled by the mask is the glow inside of the portal. Use this noise texture, Texcord index is 1, because we need a contraction effect from the edge to the center. Also texture tiling, speed and gradient settings. Use Mask G to create a gradient mask to make the contraction effect smoother. OK, let's go back to the main material. First, Reflection. Use Shape Opacity and Lerp. Input is set to 1, that's no refraction, and input B is the intensity of refraction, we set it to 0.3. Then World Position Offset. And Opacity uses Shape OP multiplied by 1.5 clamped to 0 to 1, which will make the portal more clearer, then multiplied by the particle color, 
and connected to depth fade, which is the opacity part. Finally, emissive color. We get the shape G channel, which is the ring shape. Use power to control the intensity of the ring. Add the mask we just made, multiply the output value by the particle color, and multiply it by the shape B channel, a gradient sphere mask. Because we need to make the edge of the portal more brightness, while the interior does not need too much. Then add the texture inside the portal. We have two methods. One is to use triplanar camera vector, add a texture object, then set the tiling, offset, and fade. We can use any 2D texture. The second way is to use reflection vector and cube map. Okay, since our mesh is not a plane, so the texture looks like it has been affected by refraction. Set custom world normal to zero, so that we can clearly see the internal texture of the portal. Finally, connect the output value to the derive HDR from LDR. That's it, a portal material. Now let's create Niagara. Three emitters are needed here to make a complete portal effect. The first is the state when the portal is open. Apply the mesh and material. We only need it to be spawned once, spawn count is also one. In the initialize particle, lifetime is one. The color we use user parameters and set to red by default. The size is the same. The user parameters are set to 5 by default to make it look bigger. In particle update, set curve from 0 to 1 in scale mesh size. Of course, we can make it smoother. Finally, add dynamic material parameters. Let's set these parameters. WPO is from 0 to 1, set time speed to 1. Distort is also better to use a curve from 0 to 1, and edge power is a curve from 10 to 0 0.5. The value in tiling is set to the default. If necessary, we can adjust it according to our needs. Then we make the state of the portal when it loop. When the portal is opened, we need to make it loop. Copy the emitter, these are the same here but we need to modify its spawn time. Let it spawn particles at 0.95 when the first emitter ends, then spawn the particles of this emitter. Then we add a new user parameter duration to control its lifetime. The default setting is 5. The color and size do not need to be modified. Scale mesh size is set to 1 here, because the portal doesn't need too much scaling when looping. Or if we want the portal to have a dynamic size, we can add some additional key data to the curve, which looks better. In the dynamic material parameters, the state of the loop is the final state when it is opened, the value of the curve at the end. Let's set these values in turn, and set the power to 0.5. Okay, this is the emitter when looping. Finally, let's make the state when the portal is closed. Copy the emitter, its duration needs to be longer. If the particle spawn time exceeds the duration, no particle will be spawned. So to ensure that it can be spawned normally, set its loop duration to 2 times the user duration. The spawn time is 0.95 at the user duration. Set the lifetime to 1 in the initialize particle. The other parameters are basically the same as the state when it is opened. Scale mesh size and all curve parameters should be opposite to the state when the portal is opened, so these should all be from 1 to 0. And these dynamic material parameters are the same. Okay, now let's take a look the portal in the level. Its whole effect is pretty good, but we will find that when the portal is opened, its color will have unclear flickering. 
This is because the portal in the loop state is spawned a little earlier, and the color combination of two emitters will become stronger. We only need to adjust the emitter spawn time in the loop a little later, change it to 0.97. Yes it works. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you like it. Bye.